On the instrument panel of a modern aircraft, there are three diaphragm instruments known as flight instruments. They are the airspeed indicator, the rate of climb or vertical speed indicator, and the altimeter. They are all pressure activated instruments that depend on a pitot-static system for the air pressures that operate them. All three receive static or still atmospheric air pressures. And the airspeed indicator also receives pitot or impact air pressures. The shape and location of pitot static tubes vary with the type plane, but they all work on the same principle. This is called the shark fin type. As the plane moves forward, impact air enters port A and passes through tubing to the diaphragm of the airspeed indicator. A baffle and a moisture trap stop most of the moisture from entering the tube. Accumulated water leaves the system through drain holes. This is the pitot or pressure side of the system. Static or still air under the prevailing atmospheric pressure for the altitude at which the plane is flying enters the static tube. The static holes admit only the existing atmospheric pressure through static lines to the three diaphragm instruments. The pitot and static tubes are sealed from each other. When the aircraft is in flight, the air pressure in the pitot side is always greater than in the static side. Moisture in the static tube escapes through the static air holes. Electric heating elements prevent icing and keep the drain holes open in both the pitot and static side. The airspeed indicator tells how fast the plane is flying in respect to the air around it. From its reading, the pilot knows if he is flying within the safe minimum or maximum airspeeds of his particular aircraft. Also, an increase in speed during instrument flying with a constant power setting tells the pilot his plane is descending. A decrease in speed tells him he is climbing. The airspeed indicator operates by different air pressures acting upon a diaphragm. Movement of the diaphragm is transmitted by linkage to a pointer of the dial on the instrument panel. The air pressures are obtained from the pitot-static tube. The airtight case containing the diaphragm and linkage receives air from the static line. Thus, the air inside the case is always under the atmospheric pressure of the altitude at which the plane is flying. The pitot line is directly connected to the diaphragm. Impact air entering the pitot tube causes the diaphragm to expand as the speed of the plane increases and contract as the speed decreases. This expansion and contraction is actually very slight and must not only be transmitted, but amplified by the linkage system to give a reading on the dial. Let's see how this works step by step. When the diaphragm expands, the rocking shaft is turned. This motion is transmitted to the sector, which in turn rotates the pinion and the tapered shaft with its connected pointers to give a reading on the dial. The hairspring, being tightened as the speed increases, simply keeps the linkage taut and causes it to follow a contracting diaphragm movement when the speed decreases. The airspeed indicator is calibrated to give true airspeed only at sea level and under standard atmospheric conditions, which are barometer 29.92 inches of mercury or 1013.2 millibars and temperature 59 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees centigrade. With any change in altitude or temperature, 
the instrument gives only the indicated airspeed. The airspeed correction scale on any flight computer must be used to obtain true airspeed. However, a rule of thumb is that correction for altitude error may be made by adding 2% to the indicated airspeed for every 1,000 feet above sea level. For example, if at sea level, your indicated airspeed given on the instrument dial is 150 knots, that is also your true airspeed. However, at 2,000 feet in less dense atmosphere, if your indicated airspeed is 150 knots, then your true airspeed is 150 times 2%, or 3 knots more for each 1,000 feet of altitude. So at this 2,000 foot level, six knots must be added to the indicated reading to obtain a true airspeed of 156 knots. At 4,000 feet, an indicated airspeed of 150 knots means a true airspeed of 162. At 6,000 feet, the true airspeed is 168. And at 8,000 feet, an indicated airspeed of 150 means a true airspeed of roughly 174 knots. The rate of climb, or vertical speed indicator, is a sensitive differential pressure gauge that shows the rate of ascent or descent of a plane in feet per minute. If the indicator is at the 0.5 mark clockwise from zero, it means you are climbing at the rate of 500 feet per minute. If it is at the one mark, you are climbing at 1,000 feet per minute. As you stop your climb and return to level flight, the pointer will return to zero. In descending, the pointer follows a counterclockwise course and gives the rate of descent. The rate of climb indicator is composed essentially of an airtight case containing a diaphragm, which is vented directly to the atmosphere through a connector tube to the static source of the pitot-static system. A diffuser valve assembly is also connected to the static source. This assembly, which allows air to enter or leave the case at a restricted rate, consists of a small porcelain capillary tube and a bimetallic temperature compensator. There is a linkage system composed of a link, an arm, a rocking shaft, a sector, a pinion, and the pointer. Let us suppose the aircraft is descending. Air enters from the static source of the pitot-static system. It goes directly to the diffuser valve assembly and to the diaphragm. The diffuser permits the air to seep through its pores at a predetermined rate. Since we're descending into denser air pressure, the air is slowly entering the case. However, this denser air pressure acts directly and immediately on the diaphragm. And since this pressure is greater than the gradually increasing pressure in the case, the diaphragm expands. Now suppose we stop descending and resume level flight. Within seconds, the air seeping in through the diffuser completely fills the case. The air pressure inside the case now equalizes that acting on the diaphragm. And the diaphragm returns to its original position. Now let us suppose we start climbing. The air pressure inside the diaphragm and static tube immediately become less as the plane moves up into less dense air. Pressure inside the case also begins to lessen as air gradually seeps out through the diffuser assembly. However, the pressure inside the case is now greater than that inside the diaphragm, and the diaphragm begins to collapse. When the plane resumes level flight at its new increased altitude, the air pressure inside the case soon equalizes that inside the diaphragm, and the diaphragm returns to its normal position. Basically, here is how the linkage works when the plane is descending. As the diaphragm expands, it gives the link a pushing movement. This moves an arm. 
which turns the rocking shaft. The rocking shaft turns the attached sector, which is meshed with the pinion. As the pinion turns, the connected pointer gives a new reading on the dial. The hairspring simply keeps the linkage taut and prevents backlash. Let us suppose this is the position of the diaphragm and linkage with the plane in level flight. As the plane descends and the air becomes denser, the diaphragm expands and the linkage operates to cause a new reading on the dial. Returning to level flight, the pressure inside the case rapidly equalizes the pressure inside the diaphragm, causing the diaphragm to contract to its original position and the pointer to return to zero. The same action, in reverse, occurs during a climb. The altimeter is essentially an aneroid barometer that translates inches of mercury into feet of altitude. The three hands indicate hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of feet. Thus, this reading would indicate 400 feet. This would be 1,400 feet, and this 14,000 feet. Air from the static source of the piezostatic system enters the airtight instrument case. Decreasing atmospheric pressure as the aircraft ascends acts on the multiple diaphragm, causing it to expand. Increasing pressure, encountered as the plane descends, causes the diaphragm to contract. This diaphragm movement is transmitted by multiple gears to the three hands on the dial, which show hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of feet. In its simplified form, this is the operation of the linkage. As the diaphragm expands, it pushes a link which in turn rotates a rocking shaft. This movement is imparted to the sector, which greatly amplifies the linear motion of the diaphragm. The meshed pinion gear turns the tapered hand staff and the connected pointer in a clockwise direction, indicating an increase in altitude. The hairspring keeps the mechanism taut. In descending, the action is reversed. In climbing or descending, a one-quarter inch movement in the diaphragm sends the large pointer 35 times around the dot. The diaphragm is sealed with a constant internal pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury, or standard sea level pressure. This gives an indicated reading of zero on the dot. As the aircraft ascends, the decreased atmospheric pressure allows the diaphragm to expand, and a higher reading is shown on the dial. The action is reversed in descending. In the same manner, a change in atmospheric pressure will cause a different reading on the dial. Say you are flying at 1,000 feet above sea level under standard atmospheric conditions. Barring installation and or mechanical errors, your altimeter dial will show an altitude of 1,000 feet. Now suppose you entered a low pressure area where the barometric reading radioed to you from the ground was 29.71 inches of mercury. Your altimeter would read approximately 1,200 feet, an error of 200 feet, since your actual altitude would still be 1,000 feet. The same would be true in reverse if you entered a high pressure area. To correct this error, you turn the adjustment knob until your barometric setting corresponds to that radioed to you from the ground, 29.71. The synchronized gear mechanism automatically changes the altimeter pointers back to the indicated altitude of 1,000 feet. During flight, there should be frequent radio contact to determine barometric pressure and the necessary corrections made. Always remember that the indicated altitude given by your altimeter, when corrected for temperature, gives the altitude above sea level. If you are flying at a corrected altitude of 7,000 feet just above some clouds, 
Your absolute altitude above a 6,800-foot mountain is just 200 feet. Remember that your three diaphragm or pressure-activated performance instruments all receive their activating force from the pitot-static system. The airspeed indicator utilizes the difference in air pressures received from the pitot and the static tube. It is the only one to receive both static and pitot or impact air pressure. The rate of climb indicator is activated by the rate of change in static air pressure. And the altimeter is operated by changes in static or atmospheric pressure acting on a sealed diaphragm containing a trapped pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury, the standard sea level air pressure. <laughs>